switch connections. 404.2, three-way and four-way connections. Three-way and four-way connections must be done so that only the phase conductors are switched. I'm not going to get into the wiring diagrams. So you need to get with an electrician to show you how to wire up three or four ways. And I'm sure you go on the internet about three and four-way switching and all the different combinations and how three and four-way switching. What is he talking about? I don't know. What's a three -way? What, what's a four-way? Okay. Um, Maybe, Mike, we can show more of a blueprint graphic here, possibly, and we can show a switch in one location and a switch in another location. In other words, if you go in a room and you turn on the light here, this location, then you go out and you're going to go to bed and you turn off the light in the living room, that means you're switching it in two locations, and that's called three-way. <laughs> okay. But if you're going to have a switch here and you go in here and you go out that way to the bed and you switch there, and you turn, turn the light on, but then if you decide to come in from the garage, you turn that on, and you have three switch locations, that's called four-way. So it isn't a matter like, why would you call two switches that work the same light three-way and three switches or more that control the same light four-way? It has to do with the mechanisms of internally of the switch and how it works. So go on the internet. That's not part of this program. Learn about three-way switching. Learn about four-way switching. It's a really, really study that up so that you'll be able to handle three. But here's what the key. When you look at those graphics, you better make sure they're not switching the neutral conductor and how they're showing the demonstration. Okay, good, Mario? I was just gonna say a simple way you could tell is the three-way has three terminals and the four-way has four terminals. Well, I never thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> I never said I was a smart guy. Okay, so a three-way has two terminals on one side. And one and on another, the other and side. And one on the other side, that's, that's three. three. Four-way has two on one side, two on the other side. That's four. Like I said. It's easy to determine when you're using three-way and four switches just simply by looking at the switch. Okay, so now, switches controlling, this is 404.2C, switches controlling line to neutral lighting loads must have a neutral install that all switches serving bathrooms, hallways, stairways, habitable rooms, and there is a definition of a habitable room, and we're gonna be talking about that when we review all the definitions, and a habitable room is what? Sleeping, living, eating, in a kitchen. And cooking, yes. Cooking. Yes. In a kitchen. So now you have bathrooms, hallways, stairways, bedrooms, living rooms, kitchen, and eating, and dining rooms. Dining rooms. Or occupiable spaces, and we'll talk about that in a second, as defined in the building code. So in a dwelling unit, it looks like you have to have a neutral at every single switch location that's described there. I'm not quite sure. I guess you don't have to have a neutral in a basement. Nope. Well, it could be a living, no, be a living area. Well, might not be a living area, right? The basement, because that might not be one of those listed areas. So now you need neutrals at the switch locations in these locations. And for a dwelling unit, Look at that list, and there are places that you don't have to have it. Like, you don't have to have a neutral for a switch that's switching the lights outside. You don't need a neutral for the lights in the garage, right? We don't need a neutral for the lights in an unfinished basement. Can you think of any, any other place in dwelling unit? We don't, we don't need a, a neutral closet. in the attic space. Where else? Closet. We don't need it. In closets, okay? Now, when you get the commercial, commercial is occupiable spaces. I got the definition of occupiable space if you want me to say it. Okay. What's, what, hold on. So, occupiable space would be the definition or the term that we would use for commercial. commercial. And it says on here, as defined by the building code. So, yeah. Mario, what is an occupiable it says on Hi. here in the building codes, uh, a room or enclosed <clears throat> space designed for human occupancy in which individuals congregate for amusement, educational, or similar purposes, in which occupants are engaged at labor, and which is equipped with a means of egress and light and ventilation facilities meeting the requirements of this code. So a storage room would not be an occupiable space? Nope. All right. So, Mario, could you do me a favor? Could you get that text to Brian? 
Sure. And then we could, and what, where did you get this information? Are you just making it up? No, no. ICC, ICC, the International Code. Is there a section? Or are you sure. just making it up? No, no, I'm here in the, in the no, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I'm not making things up, Mike. <laughs> not I'm anymore? Not, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. Okay, okay. So tell us, it's, tell us where you got it from. Get it's in icc.safe.org in the ICC building codes um, they, under definitions, chapter oh. two. Oh, so the chapter two definitions. All right, chapter we'll two get that in, Brian. We'll put that in there so a person can understand what an occupiable space is. Okay, so well, those spaces need neutral conductors at switches. Like, what the heck do I have to bring a neutral? Listen, we're moving more and more to electronic controls and electronic devices, occupancy sensors, motion sensors. And those type of devices require a neutral. And when there's no neutral provided in the box, electricians can be very creative, right? And then all of a sudden, they'll just go ahead and connect that requirement for the neutral. They'll connect it to the equipment grounding conductor. And that equipment grounding conductor, as we're going to describe or discuss, when we get into bonding and grounding, 250.6 says that you cannot have objectionable currents traveling on grounding and bonding conductors. And if you take a piece of equipment and it needs a neutral, but you don't connect it to the neutral because the neutral is not provided, and you connect it to the equipment grounding conductor, now the equipment grounding conductor is going to be carrying current right. under normal conditions, and it's not to be carrying current because it should only be carrying current as 250.6, I think it's D, says only under temporary conditions. That would be in the event of a ground fault until it has the opportunity to clear the fault. So we need neutral conductors at the boxes. Anybody want to say something else before I move on? Mike, I would say if I was building dwelling units, I'd put a, a neutral at every switch. Just like the outside outside lighting switch doesn't require one, I just put in a new Levington switch with an automatic controls on it. It required the neutral. That, that, that a lot then of them are now. You guys decide how and what you want to do beyond the code. Mark. 250.6C. Is it C? C. Temporary Not current. D. Okay, yeah. temporary. That's right, C. Yeah. All right, so now I'm going to go over here. So we need a, the basic rule, you need a neutral, but it tells you where. And you're saying, Mike, come on, let's just put a neutral everywhere and not screw around with it. But here, if there's three or four-way switching and they're visible in a room, then you don't need a neutral. So right here is my three-way switching. You see this right here, guys? I don't need a neutral. Only on one of those two. Here in the kitchen, there's two switches, three-way. All I need is one switch to have a neutral. And as you see here, Mike has highlighted in red those switches kind of demonstrating which of the switches. This is a fantastic graphic in identifying which switch requires neutral. And you're saying, Mike, I'm just going to put it all of them. That's okay. Put them in all of them. You have to have them in at least where it's required, Brian. Well, and I think, you know, as much as, uh, as electricians as we'd like to say, just put them everywhere, because that's me too. I'm just like, just put them everywhere. The reality of the matter is uh, if you start thinking about bigger things. There's a lot of people that are on budgets and to add neutrals in the entire house and maybe to ask a thousand dollars or whatever it happens to be. So I think they're trying to be very reasonable about this and saying, hey, if you don't need them, you don't have to add them, but you should. Let's put it this way. If you're bidding a job and you're going to have a, a huge pro a home development and you're going to be putting a neutral in every single thousand switch, houses, you're going to be figuring that you're going to be providing the neutral because that's what you think should be done. And that's the way it should be. You're not going to be in business very long. <laughs> yeah. Because they're not asking you to do it the way you want to. If it could be like you, Mike, where you work for a company, it's unlimited funds that you guys would spend, I think, uh, what was it, a quarter million dollars to put in four to 11 receptacles? You know what I mean? We had that conversation well, the other night. 12, how many? 12. 12 receptacles for a quarter million dollars. You know, and they were 20 amp circuits and 15 amp receptacles, by the way. Okay. So there's different industries, they have different budgets. So let's just know what the code says. And if you have the opportunity, but you're spending somebody else's money, and you need to ask them permission, would you like me to spend your money to do this? And that, then it's a cost value. All right, moving on. Uh, okay, we just talked about that one switch. Is that three? Versus? Okay, this graphic is probably better than this graphic here. We can, Brian, let's eliminate the second one because this is saying the same thing that this graphic is doing. This graphic is fantastic. Uh, also, a neutral is not required if you wire it with pipe. The logic is like, okay, if you wire it with pipe, why do I got to put a neutral now? I'll put a neutral later on. Like, well, can't argue against that. So if you're hooked up in pipe, don't, don't need a neutral on the switch. And then whenever you need a neutral on the switch, well, then you can then pull in a neutral on the switch. Not likely to happen, but 
Right? That's not pipe. Oh! Raceway. Oh, you've been waiting <laughs> right. for that. Oh, you've been <laughs> waiting for that. Oh, yes. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I said I think three times, too, tonight. Right in a row. Oh, yeah. That, 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 that. Okay. If a wiring method is in a raceway system, not a conduit, but it's in a raceway system, then you don't need an equipment grounding. I mean, you don't need a neutral. You see, I'm, I'm all I'm sure flustered you're, I'm now. sure you're going to get me on conduit later, but at least I got my <laughs> pipe in there. <laughs> all right. So now, if it's above us, if you, if you have access to the wiring, so you could then get a neutral conductor to the box later on, like above a suspended ceiling or below raised floor, or maybe in a basement you can drill up to get to that switch, or maybe you're in an attic space, you can drill down to get down to the switch. If you have access to that box, to that switch, then you don't need to put a neutral initially. You know, I think most of us are like, come on, we're, we're putting in a neutral, at least putting in neutral where it's required. Whether you're gonna be able to add a neutral later on, but the code says what? If you can get a neutral there later on, you don't have to put a neutral out, whether it be for them with a raceway system or just simply have accessibility to get to it. You know, right? again, so now you're looking at something where, yeah, okay, I get it. Times a thousand in a building, it's a big deal. So if you have the raceway system, you're not going to be pulling thousands of extra feet of wire just to put neutrals to put neutrals. Yeah. Makes sense. Of course. All right, let's move on to uh, switching. A neutral conductor is not required at four, not required. I think the, type, the spelling is wrong there. Neutral conductor is not required maybe for lighting switch location. Neutral, okay, for, neutral for is not a. required at a switch that's controlling a receptacle. Very simple. And we talked about that in uh, 21070 uh, about locations of lighting outlets. Yep. And then you didn't have to have a lighting outlet in, in certain rooms of a, of a dwelling unit. And then you can go ahead and just switch the receptacle. Uh, 70A, probably one or somewhere in there. And Mario, you'll get that rule later on as we come up. Um, looking at 404.2C, if not already present, in other words, if a neutral's not there in the box, a neutral conductor must be installed for any replacement switch that requires line the neutral voltage to operate the electronics of the switch in the standby mode. So, if you're putting an occupancy sensor, well, what, what, guys, what are the things that require a neutral in a switch? Occupancy sensors, <clears throat> anything else? Smart switches, smart, smart, smart dimmers. Daylight, daylight sensors. Uh, timers. Okay, but they're all switches. Yeah. Right, they're just different yeah. like features of a switch. So if you're putting in a switch in a location that, does, uh, that doesn't have a neutral, then you have to add the neutral in that location. You're like, oh, but I'm in a spot that I can't add the neutral. Oh, well, then it's an exception. We'll, we'll give you the exception. Mario? Mike, that code section is uh, 210.70A1 exception one. About, lieu, okay, A1 exception one about in lieu of the lighting outlet required by the section. Right, you can you have can a controlled a receptacle. You, can, you control receptacle. So now here's the exception. Let's get the rule. The rule is you need to have a neutral. When you put in a... a, a a smart switch or what do they call this? Electronic. Let's say operate. We're going to put an electronic switch. Well, then you need a neutral there. And if the neutral's not there, you have to add a neutral. Then they're giving us an exception because, I don't know, there has to be a billion switches, locations that don't have a neutral in them in the United States. Maybe a couple billion. I don't know. So that's probably a lot. Matter of fact, all of them. <laughs> okay. Probably. But not all of them, but almost. Oh, here's the exception. The connection requirement, meaning you have to have a neutral to connect that electronic switch, shall become effective January 1st, 2020. Well, yeah, okay. because it's the 2020 code. Okay, whatever. Next month. Next, Next month. month. <laughs> okay. It shall not apply to replacement or retrofit switches, installations, and locations prior to the local adoption of 404.2C. What that means is that if you had a switch installed prior to the requirement that there be a neutral at a switch, which is what? Forever, before December, January 1st, 2020, means all the other switches. And where the grounded conductor, and a grounded conductor, when we were in 200, we decided we're just going to be sticking with a certain type of conductor. We're not going to use the word grounded conductor, and we're going to use the word what? Neutral. The neutral. 
where the neutral conductor cannot be extended without removing finished material. So if you have to start damaging the building to get to it and removing finished material, then, okay, then I, don't, I can use a replacement electronic switch in a location that does not have a neutral if that box, you can't, you can't get a neutral there. But there's some limitations, and it says this. You can do that. But the number of electronic lighting control switches, that's a better word to use, on a branch circuit should not, exceed, should not exceed five. So if you're going to be changing these switches, and you're going to be putting in electronic lighting control switches, then it's limited to five on a circuit. And the number connected to any feeder on the load side of the system main bonding jumper shall not exceed 25. So why is that? Well, here's an example of uh, electronic control switch, which was in my house, and I got nailed because I thought the power was off. Yeah. And I was just changing the switch. And what happened was I touched, let's see, where's the switch here? This part of the switch, and I could connect the equipment grounding conductor. And I think, Ryan, you said that when you put things together, you put the equipment grounding conductor first. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Then you do the neutral, the neutral. and, then, and then, the then you do hot. Yeah. And I have a practice that I do the hot, then I do the neutral, then I do the equipment grounding conductor. You may want to change that. I, there's a lot of things I'm working on at a personal level. So I can only prioritize which of the big ones, and that's not one of the top. Maybe should move up. Anyways, we're not going to go to my first problem. I just think, let me get rid of the hots because it's hot. And I'm like, let me get them out of the way. And that way I don't be touching them. And I know the neutral's my friend, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, and I know that the equipment grounding conductor protects you, right? Not realizing, well, when you hook up the hots, if the switch is on somewhere, well, then now that neutral that's a white wire, we talked about that when we were in Article 200, right? Yes. And then the equipment grounding conductor, so what happens is they're using this equipment grounding conductor as part of the circuit, if there's no neutral, they have to have a return path for that circuit, and therefore they use the equipment grounding conductor. And these devices and research, maybe you can check into this for me, but I'm pretty confident my number, and so we'll work my number unless somebody corrects me. And it, that electronic circuit, the standard limits it to one half of one milliampere. So if you're going to have a switch and you're going to be using the equipment grounding conductor as part of the neutral return path just for one half of one one thousandth of an ampere. You follow me? So I got shocked and then I went ahead and I put this voltmeter on here. Now this is 65 volts. Without getting into complicated stuff, this is 65 open volts. Yep. Right? If I actually put myself in series, then the resistance of my body in series with the actual load, this is Kirchhoff's law of a closed loop system. We covered this in fundamentals. If I put my body in series and the, the voltmeter has a certain amount of impedance itself, and because of the voltmeter's impedance and the impedance of the actual sensor and the 120 volts, it comes out to be 65 volts. I would have to put like a 1,000 ohm resistor between this point and this point here, and then put a voltmeter across that to find out, well, what would be the voltage in reality of a thousand ohms? Either way, I got shocked. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. So now let's assume I'm correct. It's one half of one milliampere. What was the rule saying the maximum number of electronic devices that can be connected on a single circuit, the number shall not exceed five. 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 Interesting how they use the word five, but then they type in the they type in the number 25. I'm not quite sure how that grammatically is supposed to be. Yeah. So 5 at 0.5 milliampers gives me how many milliampers? This is not hard. You guys can do this. What, two and a half? <laughs> two and a half. <laughs> of course. Right? 0.5 milliampers times 5 is 2.5 milliampers in GFCIs. According to Article 100 definition, information or note, trips of how many? Six. Between 0.4 and 0.6. Not less than four. Not less than four. But it has to be over six. Right. So probably five plus or minus one milliampere, which means if you put five of these on the circuit, 
GFCI. then you're not going to be tripping the GFCI. So there has to be a limit, particularly today, as a dwelling unit, a lot of the spaces in a dwelling unit is going to be GFCI. Yeah. However, the maximum you can put on the feeder, as described in this particular uh, exception, is what? 25. Five. Okay, see how that works out? So let me review this. All the way back here. Do you need to have a neutral letter switch? Right? Why? For occupants, uh, for electronic switch control. And then if it's three ways and four ways and they're in the same room, you need only what? One neutral connected to one of the switches for the occupancy sensation or the electronic switch control. And if you run a raceway system, then you don't have to have a neutral there because the theory is that you can get a neutral conductor later. If you have access to add a neutral to a box later, then you don't have to put a neutral now because you could add the neutral later, as far as the code is concerned. If you're switching a receptacle, well, then the switch that controls the receptacle does not require a neutral because you can't have an, you cannot yeah. control a receptacle load because we don't know what might be taking place there. If you're replacing a switch in an existing installation, then it, that switch has to be replaced and has to be connected. That requires an occupancy, it requires a neutral. Then you have to add the neutral to that location. But if the neutral is not present and you can't get to it by, by somehow affecting the building finish, then you're permitted to replace the, the elect, re, put in an electronic switch control device and connect it to the equipment grounding conductor as long as it's not more, not more than five on a circuit or 25 on a feeder. Okay, guys?